Hey there, folks. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video showing a couple of different dimensioning scenarios so that uh, in Revit so that you guys uh, could uh, see some different things that can happen and know some of the ins and outs of dimensioning stuff in Revit. So uh, here we go. I'll try to keep this brief. Um, I actually recorded this once already and am doing it again because I learned some things myself here. So um, for starters, uh, you may have already noticed if you click on an object uh, like this, or um, uh, sometimes, so I'll start with this. If you click on an object, usually you get these blue dimensions that pop up. And they will be these default dimensions that dimension the things that Revit thinks you want to set the size of. But sometimes it's not what you want. And sometimes too, you'll click on something like a window and those dimensions won't even pop up. You can get them by clicking activate dimensions. So there's a lot of different scenarios there. Um, because like in these cases, like what the heck, where are even these? Like if I wanted to set the distance from here to here, how the heck do I do it, right? So um, that's where the actual dimension tool comes in. So there's a couple ways to turn it on to, to start using it. It's in the annotate tab. Uh, the main one we would want to use is aligned. Occasionally you might use an angular or a radial or something like that. But if I hover over this, we see in parentheses, it says DI. I personally like to use keyboard shortcuts in Revit. So if I hit DI on the keyboard, that jumps right into the align dimensions right here. And it gives me the other ones that I can pick from. But if you feel more comfortable with it, um, you can totally go to the annotate tab and click align there and it will do it as well. So uh, what I can do here now is <clears throat> now I can actually set, like let's say I really wanted to set the distance between this bed and the wall. If I pick on the edge of the bed and on the wall, uh, it is going to give me a dimension there just like that. And I can go in here and I can actually change. If I was doing walls, I could set it to, to lock onto the center line of the wall or the center of the core. Um, those are more advanced options that you might not necessarily uh, need uh, in here, but they're there if you need them. Uh, and you can also pick entire walls versus individual references. So play with those if you ever feel like it applies to you, but it may not. Uh, so if we look at this now, what we're going to find is I'm going to hit escape to cancel out of my dimension tool. You might say, oh, I can click on this and set the distance, right? But you click it once, nothing happens. Maybe you try double clicking it and you get all this mumbo jumbo where you can't type anything in and it can be very frustrating. You don't want to just put text there. You want to actually change the position of the bed. Well, to do that, you have to actually now click on the bed. And when you do so, you're going to see that this text is going to turn blue, just like all our other dimensions. And now if you click on it once, now I can say, OK, I want this to be exactly three feet. Um, as far as typing the dimensions into Revit, if you type just a three, it's going to assume you mean feet. If you just type a number, it thinks you mean feet. If you want to do feet and inches, like maybe I want this to be three feet, six inches, which is going to put it in the wall, you can put a space. And the second thing that you do will be inches, okay? So now it's running into the wall, which is not what we want. And let's see, if I want three foot six and a half inches, I can type more spaces to separate them. And so that can be a really convenient way to do this. So maybe we want four feet, three and one quarter inches. And that is how we would get that distance there. So let's change this back to three. Um, so that gives us that dimension there and that allows us to change it. If these are getting in your way and they're a little ugly and you sort of put things where you want, but you don't need them, you don't need to see that they're there anymore, you can click this and actually delete it and your bed is not going to move. But now your bed is vulnerable to being moved because um, that dimension is not there. But actually we see we could move the bed anyways and that dimension is gonna update accordingly. We just couldn't see it anymore if we deleted that. So deleting that, I'm just picking it and hitting the backspace uh, or the delete key on the keyboard. Let's see, backspace also works. So um, so that's kind of the, the very most basic part of, of dimensioning things. The real key is you have to pick the two objects and then you have to click the one that you want to actually move and then you can actually edit that distance in there. Be careful of situations like this. Watch this. If I click aligned and I pick this wall and I want a dimension to this wall, if you're not careful, if I click right here and I stamp that dimension down and then I hit escape to get out of my dimension tool and I pick the wall, I'm like, what the heck? I still can't edit that. I don't understand. Well, 
you might not have caught it, but when I was placing that dimension, I clicked this and I hovered here, the whole wall wasn't lighting up. See how that is like the whole wall is turning blue, but up here, it's just actually the line on the side of the bed. In this case, I was actually secretly dimensioning the position of the bed, the edge of the bed and not the wall. So you have to watch out when you have objects close together. If you're having trouble picking the, uh, the actual line that you want, you can hit tab on the keyboard. So I'm gonna hit tab once, watch this. It's gonna cycle through all of the different lines that are really close to my cursor. So every time I'm hitting tab, it's picking a new object. And that can really be helpful to making sure you're dimensioning to the line that you want is you move your mouse to the spot where you wanna place the dimension or, or select or do whatever else you're doing and then keep hitting tab and watch what lights up and then stop hitting tab when you're ready and click down and that's gonna pick that object. So that would dimension to the side of the bed there. Um, the last dimensioning thing that I wanna show is using the EQ option. Uh, so what you can do is like, say I wanted to uh, make these windows equally spaced along this wall. If I pick this wall, I can pick multiple objects. So I'm clicking on each of these. Most objects like doors and windows, you pick to, to the center of them as well as the edge of them. So you can think about what you want there um, and click on what you need. So I'm gonna dimension those objects. I'm gonna stamp it down over here. And I have this little EQ option. And if I click that watch, it's going to equally space all of those dimensions along there. So that can be super helpful. Um, and that acts as a constraint. So if I get out of my dimension tool and I actually drag this wall, it's going to keep those windows evenly spaced no matter where I put this wall. If I delete this dimension, it is going to offer to unconstrain them. And now if I move those windows, it gives me all sorts of errors because they're, they're not on the wall anymore. But actually when I delete it, if I had a constraint, I can just say, okay and it should preserve that EQ constraint, but it's invisible now. And that actually works for other things too. If you really needed this bed here to stay exactly three feet from the wall, so I'll do DI, I'll pick the edge of the bed and the edge of the wall, and I click this lock, it's gonna lock that bed into place. And if I try to move it, it's gonna give me an error. Look at that, I can't drag it off to the right because it's actually locked, it's constrained into that spot. And even if I delete this, oops, let me delete the underlying dimension here. There we go, delete. It's gonna offer again to unconstrain and I could say, yes, I wanna unconstrain it or I could say, okay. And it's gonna remember that I had constrained that before. So this can be helpful if you're really trying to get things to fit, but you need something to stay in a specific location relative to something else. You can even lock stuff to walls. So if I drag this up here, a little lock appears. Uh, this isn't locking them the, to the wall though. This is actually locking these two beds' um, center line together. And then those two beds would actually move together. The only thing I'll caution you all about is if you're constraining things, oh, now it actually gives me, ready, if I snap it up against the wall, uh, right there, it gives me the option to put a lock onto that wall. Get out of here, this other bed's getting in the way. There and then I can lock it to the wall. And now actually, if I move this wall, it's gonna stay stuck to the wall. But be careful with those locks and be careful with the EQ constraint because sometimes Revit can really say like, hey, you have extra constraints. You're trying to move something away from it, um, but you don't necessarily like know what the constraints are. Like if I tried to come in here now and say that I want the distance from here to here to be, um, I want it to be something different uh, or I wanted the distance between this bed, the edge of the bed and this wall to be like 12 feet. It's going to it's gonna be like, you can't do that because you have a constraint. Ready? 12, enter. Oh no, can't change dimension to this value. But here's the problem. It doesn't really tell you why. So if you're going to use the locks or the EQ constraints, make sure you remember that you're doing it so that later on, if you go to dimension something else and it gives you this error and you can't figure out why, um, you'll remember that you constrain things. And sometimes you can click show and it'll try to tell you what it thinks the problem is, but right now it's being super vague and it's not reminding me that I put the lock on this constraint. So I'm having a hard time figuring out what to do. So you gotta kind of be aware of what you have locked and what you have done an equal constraint on because it can come back to bite you later. But anyways, to review, the most critical thing to remember here is that if you want to set the distance to something between something and something else, okay, 
You can go to your dimension by either hitting DI or going into annotate and then clicking align dimension. You click between your two points, place the dimension, hit escape to get out of it, and then pick the object that you want to actually be moved when you type the number in. And then when you type the number in, it's gonna move that object accordingly. Um, and again, that won't stay unless we click that lock. I can still change this, but it will stay unless something moves it, like you move it or you move something near it. So hope this helps. Um, this uh, was pretty coherent here. So um, yeah, give this a watch and see what you think. Let me know if you have questions.